FigureMoreCare.com. We're all in this together. Hey guys, Ed over here at Figure Repair. Talk about how to properly purge the air out of the high pressure oil system on your Power Stroke 6 liter. Um, if you do this, you'll dramatically limit your need to become my customer for the FICM anyway. I mean, we sell everything like 65 million parts, so front end parts, injectors, turbos, lift kits, whatever you need, we got you. But we are up for essentially everybody in this space. But the goal is not to sell you stuff. The goal is to tell you stuff and to keep you out of trouble. So let's do that. Let's go. So when you change out an injector, when you change out a high pressure oil system uh, component, whether it be the pump or um, even you know an oil cooler or something, anything that, that jacks with the high pressure oil pump's ability to, to, to see flow, without air. Um, obviously it takes a bit to get that air purged out of the system and without 500 psi of injection control pressure, the Cliff Notes version is you're just not going to have, um, regardless of what you want, you're not going to have ignition. You need 500 psi in order to enable the possibility of ignition. And so how do we get that? Well, we crank the motor over. Why? Because by cranking the motor over, we spin the high pressure oil pump. And that's the only way it's gonna pump, you know, pump oil. And the high pressure oil pump is a, it's a high pressure, low volume pump. And so it takes a hot minute is the short answer. The problem is that the FICM is just an amplifier with a brain. And the number one way to kill any amp is inadequate supply side voltage. And so what we know going in is that, hey, look, we can cause ourselves some very serious problems by going ahead and starving the fuel injection control module for, for, um, for what it needs, for, for, uh, for electrons. And so what a lot of guys will do is, you know, they'll do their high pressure oil system work and they'll say, hey, you know, they'll just crank on the truck until it starts. And they're like, hey, it's worked for me for all these years. I never knew the wiser. Uh, I don't see what this guy's talking about. The problem with that is that a fair amount of time, a fair amount of time worth talking about, um, commonly, you know, one to six months later, sometimes, you know, that night or that day, but commonly one to six months later, you end up trashing the, uh, the, the damage that you caused by that event damages the drivers in the decision-making half of the FICM primarily, the logic board. And so, and you know, you know, you end up with a UO105 code loss communication with FICM, or you end up with a circuit low code on an individual injector. And let's avoid this. I mean, come on, there's just no reason to do this. I mean, if you, you know, if you just want your wallet into, I guess we'll help you. But I mean, that's just crazy. Why would you want to do that? No, please don't. We'll use me dies inside. So, what you want to do instead is you want to get the uh, motor to spin without sending any voltage through the FICM. Now there's three ways to do this, uh, but one stands apart from the others. Uh, way number one is just don't have the FICM installed. Physically, it's out of the truck. You can't possibly hurt it uh, with it out of the truck, and you can certainly crank on the truck to your heart's content um, without the FICM installed. The truck's not going to start, but the starter will engage. You will indeed um, cause the high pressure oil pump to pump and you will indeed send high pressure oil out to the system and you'll indeed purge enough air to get uh, the truck to start for after you do put the FICM back in. Okay, um, so that's way number one. Just keep the FICM out. Way number two um, is not ideal but it does work. Way number two is on the driver's side of the truck um, all the way up by the blower motor there's this little electrical connector about the size of your pinky. And if you disconnect that, you just squeeze the little prongs and disconnect it and take the resultant end and touch it to the positive post of the, of the passenger side battery, the starter will engage. And you'll only send current to the starter. And you're like, what's wrong with that? That's beautiful. That's built-in happiness. Um, yes, that's true. 
The problem with that is that you're not actually uh, giving any kind of juice to the injection pressure regulator valve, the IPR valve. And remember the high pressure oil pump is a high pressure, low volume pump. So don't you want every little iota, every half an ounce of oil out of that pump to make it up to the oil rail to, um, to start purging that air out? Well, of course you do, right? So don't do that. Um, but it is effective. It's just, you're putting needless wear and tear in your starter. Why would you do that? You're ticking off your batteries by, by you know, drawing them down more. Why would you do that? It's just not ideal. It's not what you want to do, okay? Uh, way number three is the best way. Uh, it's really the number one way. You know, it's a little teaser, dangle the carrot. Not really a carrot dangler kind of guy. <clears throat> but the uh, way number three is the best way. Way number three is to actively prevent only the thickum from getting current and don't let anything else get prevented. And the way you do this is you yank the relay for the thickum and you, uh, you just pull it out of the fuse boxes to the driver's side of the master cylinder. And you go ahead and you, uh, you, you, you pull it up out of there. You, um, and now with that relay out of the system, now you go ahead and you um, you uh, crank on the truck 15 seconds on, 45 seconds off until such time as you develop adequate uh, high pressure oil. And so that, that method does work. Now what you're going to want to do to do this is step one, hook up a battery charger to the batteries. Don't care which battery. And if you've, been, if you've got a Bama Jamma, you know, wheel up 100 amp charger, oh awesomeness. Recognize it's 1,350 amps or so in rush current to get the starter to begin spinning. And then it's another 300 amps or something like 300 amps, three to 400 amps, depending on what starter you have, the 6.0 starter or the 6.4 starter, um, to keep the starter engaged. It's a lot of electrons leaving the proverbial building. And so we know that going in, okay? And so, um, your 100 amp charger is just not going to offset all of that. So you're going to be drawing the batteries down during this process. Don't think you're not. It's going to happen. And that's just something to understand. Okay. Now, when you go ahead and you, um, and, and you, you hook up the battery charger, step one, step two, you unplug the Fickham's relay. Perfect. Yay. Um, all, all some life is good. Step three, you go ahead and you uh, hop in the truck, you put the key in the ignition, um, and you in, 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 in put it to the on position. By the way, little sidebar here, if you did anything with the fuel system, so including injectors, but uh, but also, uh, you know, if you did fuel filters, change the fuel line, throw the return in or whatever, what you want to do here is you want to go ahead and we should shoot a whole other video on this. I just want to, if you only see this one video, I want you to have all the information. So um, go ahead and turn the key to the on position, wait 15 seconds, then turn it off, on position 15 seconds, then turn it off three different times. And that purges the air out of the fuel side, that way you're not hurting the injector that way. Oh my gosh. So now, fine, that's done or it wasn't applicable as the case may be. Now you go ahead and you engage the starter and you, um, you know, uh, turn the key to the, to, 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 to the start position, 15 seconds on, 45 seconds off. Now, when do you know that you're done? It depends on whether you have gauges or not. If you have gauges, and if you don't have gauges, oh my gosh, you know, we, uh, Edge makes an unbelievable gauge. Ed, Edge and, and, and Insights uh, CTS3 color touchscreen version 3. It's built in happiness. Uh, we'll have another video on that. But there's less expensive options as well. There's a scan gauge too. There's a, there's a Torque Pro app on your iPhone or Android device. There's lots of options. But ideally, you would have a way to monitor high pressure oil. And so if you have a way to monitor high pressure oil, what you would do is you would go ahead and you would crank on the truck 15 seconds on, 45 seconds off, until such time as you see 500 PSI of pressure built. Now, after you get there, and commonly, that's as much as three minutes of starter engagement time to make that happen, okay? So it's, it can be a lot. Um, the Commonly, after you've done that, 
uh, you're, you're ready to say, okay, let me put the relay in. Please don't. You know, uh, leave the battery charger hooked up. Let the batteries recover for however long they need to recover for until they're fully charged again. You know, um, take your significant other out for, for, for dinner. Tell them you love them, all this kind of stuff. Have some family time. Uh, go ahead and do whatever you have to do. Uh, and whatever you should be doing, actually, instead of doing this. And, you know, that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> but the, uh, at, at any rate, uh, let the batteries recover. After the batteries have had a chance to recover, then come back, and ideally now you'd have a buddy. Um, and the issue is that you're, there's still air in the high pressure oil system, and actually quite a bit of it. So it's going to take probably every bit of 20 seconds uh, to get up to 500 psi again, 20 seconds of cranking. So what you want to do this one time is go ahead and crank on the truck until you see 500 psi. Um, which shouldn't be any more than like, it's about 20-ish seconds. If you're cranking for 30 seconds and you still don't have that pressure oil, please stop. I don't want you to burn up your starter. I don't want you to cause all kinds of problems. But at any rate, if you have gauges, um, 20 seconds or so should do it. If you don't have gauges, 20 seconds or so should do it anyway, uh, if everything else is copacetic. But you crank on it and you'll, you'll, uh, you can actually hear in the engine the, the, the different sound of when that happens and you'll be like, aha, I have high pressure oil, yes. Uh, so you hear 500 PSI, after you hear 500 PSI, cut off the key, ideally you'd be working with somebody, right? Ideally you'd have somebody that, um, that's helping you, they'd pop in you know, the key off, they'd pop in the relay really quick, and then you'd crank on, you'd engage the starter again, and what'll happen is your truck will fire immediately up. And that's awesome. If you don't have a buddy, yeah, it happens, right? Um, hop out of the truck as fast as you can. Go ahead and um, pop that relay in. Hop back over to the start, all over to the key, and crank on the truck. And um, and it'll take a couple seconds longer than it would have otherwise, because you know, if, again, you 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 have uh, drained back all this kind of stuff going on. Um, fine. But now the truck has started. You're tempted to go out and do your happy dance and all this kind of stuff and say, you know, yeah, you know, yay team, praise God, all the things. And um, but you're not done yet. Let the truck idle until uh, it's getting to be up to full operating temperature, so like 120 to 130 degree oil temperature minimum. Uh, but then go ahead and uh, pull it out of the pull it out of the driveway, out of the shop, whatever you're in, and go for a drive. <clears throat> keeping it at about 3,000 or so RPM. So just keep it in, low, in a lower gear, second gear, whatever, and do this in uh, 3,000 RPM for about five minutes of driving. Just zzz, not trying to accelerate, just zzz. And so what you're trying to do is you're trying to purge the remaining bit of air out of the, out of the oil rail. If you do this, you get back, now you really are done. Uh, now everything's copacetic and wonderful. If you don't, what'll happen is tomorrow morning when you go to start the truck, it still won't start right. It'll still be like crank, 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 crank. You're like, oh God, is something broken here? What's going on? You crank on it again. You crank, maybe take two, three, four times to get it to go, all because all of the oil is not purged out of the high pressure oil system. But if you do this, you will actively have prevented any oil from, um, from uh, not doing its job from you know, just going right back into the oil pan, which is what happens when you use a remote start engagement wire. If you do this, you will minimize the, the wear and tear on your starter. If you do this, you will um, minimize the, the depth of discharge in your batteries. And if you do this, and probably the most important on this whole list, is you'll prevent yourself from having to become my customer for the FICM. And so I hope this helps somebody. Uh, if, you have, if you have questions, uh, please put them in the comments below. If you have other videos you'd like us to produce, uh, other questions you've got, uh, send us a note uh, through our contact us page at FICMrepair.com, FICMrepair.com, and we will take unbelievably good care of you. So thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you haven't. It does help the algorithm, and um, life is good and getting better. All right? Thanks very much, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. We're all in this together. Take care. Bye-bye.